Are you ready? The fifth flight of Starship has just been given a new launch date, and Elon Musk has revealed this, and there's no reason for us not to believe it. So when will that fifth Starship flight be happening? Are there any challenges for SpaceX in the upcoming missions? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And hey, thank you so much for watching. Let's get into it. Recently, SpaceX provided the latest updates on Starship after a considerable period of silence. On the weekend of August 8th, the company shared on the X platform that Flight 5 Starship and Super Heavy are ready to fly pending regulatory approval. And while waiting for the regulatory body to evaluate the extremely complex catch tower plan, SpaceX plans to conduct additional recovery tests and continue developing the vehicle for Flight 6. This seems to be a positive signal for everything that's about to happen. As expected, not long after, Elon Musk reaffirmed the launch date for the Starship flight as about three weeks on August 11th on his X platform. This means the next Starship test flight could get FAA approval by the end of August or early next month, potentially happening on August 29th, 30th, 31st, and September 1st. So what day is that going to happen? Don't hesitate to let us know your predictions down there in the comments. Although this timeline is somewhat delayed compared to earlier statements about a launch last month, the inherent risks of the Catch Tower operation seem to have extended the FAA's scrutiny after the agency previously indicated they could expedite Starship approval if SpaceX decides to proceed with both launch and recovery ops along with the flight path. Don't be too disheartened by that delay. In any case, fifth Starship flight is going to be a performance you won't want to miss. This will be the first flight where SpaceX attempts to catch Super Heavy before the successful soft landing and intact recovery of Starship, as seen in the fourth launch that happened in June. If successful in the sixth flight, SpaceX and Elon will certainly be aiming for even more ambitious feats with the spacecraft. We could even imagine a near future where Mechazilla can complete two catches with boasting Ages of Starship. However, there are also risks, such as the possibility of Super Heavy malfunctioning and endangering the only operational Starship launch tower. To complete this process, Starship needs to achieve precision in position, height, and timing. The stage has an onboard navigation system using gyroscopes and accelerometers, which provide a really good dead reckoning position calculation. It also has radar, which is used to give an indication of height and possibly horizontal angle and speed during the final part of the landing. It may also use GPS as an additional position or reference. All of these together are combined by the onboard computers to give a good indication of where the rocket is in relation to the target landing spot. Raptor engine can be accurately throttled over a wide range, and SpaceX has enough experience with them to accurately predict how much thrust the engine will give at different throttle settings. The actuators that steer the engine are pretty strong and can shift the engine from side to side quickly. On top of that, the descending stage has cold gas thrusters and four electrically controlled grid fins used for steering during descent. The stage's onboard computers know where the rocket is and where it needs to be, and they know how the engine will respond to throttling and steering, how strong the thrusters are, and how well the grid thins will work at different speeds and heights. Solving the problem of how to get to the landing site from the current position using the various control methods available is a pretty hard mathematical problem, but computers... <laughs> Fortunately, are very good at math. Besides the catch tower, another important test that SpaceX may conduct during Starship Flight 5 is the reignition of the engines in space. This test was skipped during the third and fourth test launches, and right now, it's not hard to guess that it'll be happening during Starship's fifth flight. This is a big time test for the future when SpaceX and Elon aim for Starship to play a central role in their ambitions for Mars and even multi planetary missions. Long distance travel anywhere in a vacuum environment will no longer be an obstacle for this ginormous spacecraft. However, restarting engines in the vacuum of space with extremely cold temps is not easy. As a general rule, the more complex a rocket engine is, the harder it is to reignite, especially liquid fueled rocket engines. They have to pump large amounts of of liquid fuels up to very high pressure before they enter the combustion chamber and be lit up to start the engine, and this requires an enormous amount of power to achieve, thousands of horsepower for a large engine. The launch tower infrastructure can provide this power via high-pressure nitrogen gas lines that disconnect at initial launch, but after that, a rocket requires its own store of high-pressure gas to restart for a second time. There are two other complications to restarting. One, the rocket engines require a highly reliable source of ignition to start. 
This is typically provided by either injecting a hypergolic fluid, two chemicals that when mixed spontaneously catch fire, or a special kind of spark plug. And two, the fuel needs to get to the pumps to restart the engines. This is easy for most engines because gravity is used to accumulate the fuel at the bottom of the tank. Rockets are often operated in zero gravity, and this method doesn't work. The liquid fuel droplets are floating freely inside the half-empty tank. Before attempting a relight, the rocket needs to be shoved forward to push all the liquid into accumulating at the base of the tanks where the pumps can grab it. If the pumps are spun up without the propellant there, the pumps will fly apart and destroy the engine. Difficulties are present, but I guess these scenarios won't be too much of an obstacle for SpaceX. After all, these are engineers with nearly a century of experience working with their Falcon rocket line. Let's trust and look forward to the miracles that'll happen in any way possible. While waiting for the FAA to grant permission for the flight, the pair of Ship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 are getting ready to face the upcoming goal. After Ship 30 was equipped with a new, stronger heat shield design and additional backup protection, it completed a static fire test with all six engines running at full capacity. However, after the test was completed, Ship 30 got moved to Mega Bay 2 to replace one of its engines. This has led to speculation that the spacecraft encountered some issues after the test. This is not new. Ship 30 had a similar issue after its first static test back in May. This shows the importance of static tests in identifying and addressing problems before the actual flight. Now, with a new engine replacement, the question arises, will SpaceX need to conduct another static test for Ship 30? The question comes up as Ship 30's movement schedule has been somewhat unpredictable. On August 9th, Ship 30 left Mega Bay 2 with predictions that it would move to the Massey for a static fire test. But in reality, Ship 30 moved to Rocket Garden, and as of the time I'm making this video, there has been no further movement from Ship 30. As for Booster 12, we also got a glimpse of the hot staging at the end of last month, but since then, no perfect design has appeared. They may still be fine-tuning it. But soon, the story will continue. Booster 12 and Ship 30 might complete a wet dress rehearsal afterward. It's unclear when or even if this is going to happen or how close to the launch it'll be. Besides prepping for the fifth flight, SpaceX has been developing hardware for its future Starship rockets. Now that work on Ship 30 is complete, let's talk about Ship 31. About a week ago, Ship 31 was taken out of Mega Bay 2 after six Raptor engines were installed and moved to High Bay. Typically, the next step would be engine testing, but it seems SpaceX has other plans for Ship 31. That's not too surprising, as Ships 30 and 31 are almost identical. When Ship 31 was put next to Ship 30 at High Bay, where Ship 30 was having its heat shield replaced, we got an idea of what was coming next. Workers began setting up scaffolding around Ship 31 and taking off the old heat shield, beginning with the ship's nose and fins. Looking back at the heat shield replacement process for Ship 30, SpaceX started the removal right after the fourth flight on June 11th and finished on July 20th. It took them over a month to completely replace the world's largest heat shield. With the experience gained, hopefully the heat shield replacement for Ship 31 will go faster, possibly even before the fifth flight. As for the other half of Ship 31, Booster 13 has been on the central work platform at Mega Bay 1 since it completed its cryo-proof test at the end of April. Teams are now working on erecting a tent over the forward dome of Booster 13, suggesting that some major work's being done on the booster. Also, Booster 13 still does not have grid fins. Not only that, SpaceX continues to prepare for Flight 6. One crucial step is returning B14.1 to the orbital launch mount for testing. In late June, B-14.1 was attached to the OLM and underwent a procedure called chopstick slapping. This test aims to adjust the speed and control of the chopstick arms in preparation for the actual landing of a booster rocket in the future. Additionally, the engineering teams tested the landing rail system to ensure it could withstand the necessary sudden loads. Following initial tests, SpaceX made improvements. They replaced many connections on the landing rails on both arms while upgrading and adding more drive systems. These enhancements aim to increase the system's load-bearing capacity and improve its controllability. Another important change is the upgrade of the buffer pads used in the slapping of B-14.1 in June. For the northern arm, the entire drive system got replaced, while on the southern arm, only the main drive got upgraded. As a result, after these changes are completed, both arms will be capable of moving at max speed. And with these improvements, SpaceX plans to conduct a comprehensive hand slap test, where both arms simultaneously perform a rocket catching simulation. Notably, this time they plan to execute a complete motion, including raising the arms after slapping, an important step that they didn't perform in the previous test round. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.